Okay, here I am working on the sky, getting close to the end, which is what I, I think I already said a couple of times. Sorry about that. Last layer I did these little wipeouts, and I noticed that I still need to get this purple here more intense, and I need to get more of this violet here more intense. <clears throat> and I'm going to mess around with these little um, cloud thingies. <laughs> How's that for being technical? Um, so let's get started. Let's get started, shall we? This is still my favorite brush. This is the, um, the old, I think this is goat's hair. I got it from a, um, from a little art store in Chicago when I was still in art school. It was a, I don't know what the right term is, oriental, if that's offensive. But I think that's what they called it, you know, for... Um, Art supplies specifically for oriental art. They had paper and brushes and these cool brushes like this. I think. I have an even cooler one, but I'm not going to show you right now. If you notice, I keep leaning over it. Sorry, I'm getting my head in the way of the one camera. But I want to see the uh, amount of shine to see the amount of water. Okay, so I mixed up a couple of puddles here. This is the violet, uh, pur purplish violet. And I think I'll put some of that here too. And a little blue. And the same blue, and I, you notice I just got it to be not too wet. I'm going to add a little bit more here to define these cirrus looking clouds. There's something right here. And there's a flaw in the paper that's been bugging me there. So I thought, I thought I would try putting a cloud to mask it a little bit. And I am running out of time here. Darn it. I'll get this a little more violet. When you're at the very end of your layer is when you can get the finest lines where they don't spread out because the water you know, is not as wet. The water is not as wet. Is that the right way to say it? The water is not so thick. There's just enough in there. And the paint gets these nice, um, real fine, soft lines. And now I'm going to do a little more over here. I don't want to get these little drips interfering. This is more of a rose here. Okay. That's it for this layer. You got to know when to say no. Okay, here we are. I'm working on the sky and I did a little wiping out and I did some little darks. And <laughs> I keep pushing this one little piece down. And I don't normally do this, uh, this making it up as I go. But I'm trying to solve problems, and that's what you do when you're an artist making a painting. It's, it's largely a matter of solving problems.
trying to make it look as good as it can look. Uh, there's a lot of different things, you know, all kind of going on at the same time. So when I look at this, I feel like the sky is not there yet. These streaks are good, but they're, they don't look like clouds. They look like little streaks of color. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously wet the whole thing down again. And I also think that this needs to be a little bit more intense here. Looking at the uh, photo reference, I really want that to jump out. Um, I like what, what I've got going on over here. Obviously, a lot of trees are going to be coming up over this, so it's not these little drips here aren't going to really show. And I, I need to do something with this. This could be you watching Steve Kozar really screw up. And then again, I could do something brilliant. <laughs> and, and probably it will be neither of those things, as is usually the case. I hope you can see how lightly I'm rubbing this brush across the surface. I am not digging in at all. I'm just barely touching the surface of the paper, if that helps explain what I'm doing as I re-wet it a million times. And again, I'm leaning over this to see the shine, which is the only way to really know how much water is there. I want it to be enough water, and I want it to be about the same amount of water over the whole thing. Oh, I'm going to get that. Oh, I forgot to get that. get some of that yellow which will turn into orange because I've got that pink there time. The, uh, the brush strokes that are in the sky are all too similar, too equal in, in weight, which is another way of saying the size and shape. So I'm going to make this one a little bit more pronounced. What are we doing with the wetness here? I don't have much time. Don't have much time at all. And this needs a little bit of something here. I'm not convinced of this color right there. It looks a little too, I don't know, a little too too much like little spiky things going on. The only reason I wipe these edges is because I, uh, I just don't want drips to somehow find their way back into the sky and really mess things up. No, I am liking it so much better right now. It's amazing. And I'm not done yet, but everything's making more sense now. Whew. I'm not kidding you. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm making this up as I go. So, not my normal method, but it's working. Here we go. I'm going to do another layer. I don't have any paint ready to go. Let me do that. A little bit of blue with a little bit of this rose color here. 
Anybody tired of me saying I'm getting close to the end here? I think I've said that about nine times now. But it's finished when it's finished. And I do like the way it's turning out and that's really all that matters. Here I go, wetting it down. Sticking my head in the camera so you can't see what I'm doing. I think I need a tiny bit more yellow right there. Oh, I didn't mix up the yellow. See what happens when I make a video? I'm off my A game. Oh yeah, that's what I needed right there. I want that intensity. I'm going to go right along here. This is where the, the water along the edge here can really add something that I don't want. You know, it can kind of ease into there and spread it out in a way that doesn't look, doesn't look quite right. There, I think that's going to glow better. Now what do I got? Not much time here. Violet. Okay, that's it. Well, I got a little more time right there. Trying to lift a little bit here. Get just a little bit more of a highlight. You see I'm pushing the paint off. I'm thinking about doing it right here as well. And I think that'll distract from those little flaws in the paper. Now I'm done. Well, that last layer really did a lot as far as uh, making the clouds do what I wanted them to do. 
and I'm going to do a little bit more with the clouds. And, and then I'll be done with the sky. And I'm just getting started. I'll be curious to hear in uh, comments on this process, this handful of videos about the sky, how many people say, wow, that's really interesting, but I don't want to do that. You have my permission to do something different. And it's also great if this is uh, helpful. And this is going to help you do something that you never could quite do before. I'm having problems with these cameras not always working both at the same time. Also had a problem with the microphone, so I'm just using the microphone built into the... These aren't really cameras, these are iPhones. I like the way this goes behind the sign now. And I don't want to put a... well, let me put a soft thing there. Because I just wet it, it's going to spread quite a bit. Which is fine if that's what I'm going for, but if I want the really thin streaks, I have to wait till it's not quite so wet. This needs a little bit more definition, needs a little bit more pink, not blue. The blue doesn't really make sense. Okay, now it's drying too much, and that's all I can do for this layer.
Okay, I took off the tape that was along the edge of the uh, sky. I didn't show that. And now I'm just showing you a little bit of how I use one of these things to take off the fluid. Not the fluid, what do you call it? The masking fluid. Comes out real easy. And you can see the lines are not very even. And I'll tidy all that up by painting. And, um, oh, this is one more piece here. The, the manhole cover, which also isn't isn't perfectly uh, shaped, but I, I will fix that when I go in there with some little strokes later. So now, the, uh, the all the masking is off, the masking fluid and the, um, the, the tape, and I'm ready to do some real painting. Okay, everybody, I want to show you the uh, painting after I've taken the masking off, and I want to give you a little heads up on how I've been filming up to this point. Right now, I'm backing up a little bit to show you that I've had a table here, which is really just a temporary table, because I've been using the painting in the flat position, obviously, as I'm doing these multiple washes. And above me, I've had this iPhone kind of hanging here. But you can see now that the, uh, the painting is on an angle. This is my kind of built-in table easel thing. And I will be using this for most of what I do from this point forward. Uh, but I also wanted to mention how important it has been for me, even though I've had the painting flat while I'm working on the, the various layers. When I'm evaluating it, I've been propping it up and looking at it in this much more horizontal, I mean, uh, vertical position. And, and, and of course, I've got the photo reference above it. And this is a really good thing to keep in mind. When you're working on something flat, don't leave it flat for all the uh, process. Uh, put it up uh, on an easel or somewhere propped up against a wall. Look at it in that position. Um, and also, I just wanted to mention how I really like the way this guy turned out, and I could have gone further and added even more clouds, and I decided, nope, nope, it's not that kind of a sky, and, and there's a risk of it looking too artificial, because I was not referring to an actual sky, I was just making it up, and I think I pulled it off, and I decided that I'm done, I want to move on to the next part, so obviously the next part involves all the rest of the painting, the only thing I've got anything close to being not even halfway done is the road. And in many landscape paintings, you have to work from the sky to the distant background up to the foreground. And that is sort of the case here, but really, I could be working on this building, and there are some little things going on behind the building, like a, a tree kind of meets it, and there's another tree over here. And I could do these trees alongside of it, it doesn't really matter. And then, of course, I can paint this building first, because it doesn't matter. It's not like there's a bunch of things behind it that have to be painted first. So this is a a landscape, uh, officially this is a landscape painting, but it's a little bit different in that it doesn't have such a, um, uh, a need to be painted sky, background, mid-ground, and then foreground, like is often the case, with uh, especially with watercolors where you have to plan these things. I could work on the road, and then I could work on the, uh, the background on the left, and then I could work on the background way over on the right, then I could work on what's going on in the window of the, uh, of the diner, I could work on the neon signs, it, it's not going to really matter a whole lot. And for the purpose of me showing the process, I will probably not jump around as much as I normally do. I have a very um, ADHD way of working on paintings, which is just to get anything done. And if I find myself stuck or bored, just move on and do something else. So normally when people see my paintings, they ask me what part of it is done, and I, I wind up saying, um, really nothing. I'm just, you know, working all over the place. But I'm going to try to do a little bit more of this very deliberate working on a section, showing you as I'm working on it, and keeping that area busy and working and working, working till it's either done or really close to being done. Sometimes you're not sure if an area is done until you do the area right next to it. So that may be the case. That will probably, probably be the case with some of this painting. Anyway, that's all for now.